From sun signs to retrogrades, we take you into the world of astrology and shed light on what the stars have in store for you. This is Stargazing. Dating is hard enough, and with the cosmos sticking its nose into your love life, things can start to get pretty complicated. We're doing a deep dive into romantic relationships, and there's a lot of folks out there saying things like Aries should only date Geminis, but is that really true? Today, we're taking a look at which signs go well together. In Roman mythology, Venus was the goddess of love, and today, not much has changed. In astrology, the planet Venus rules over Libra and Taurus. Its location in your birth chart can tell you a ton about how you look at love, how you act on your desires, and how you handle your relationships. Next time you're building your dating profile, be sure to check your Venus sign before you swipe left. Hey guys, I'm Colin Bedell. I'm an astrologer and an author, and I'm here giving readings on the street. Let's talk about love. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so I'm here with Aquarius Hannah. Aquarius, January or February? February. February. February what? 10th. 10th. We're going to talk about her relationship. Or what is your partner's birthday? May 16th. May 16th, a Taurus. Very nice. So you guys are both fixed signs in astrology. So the four fixed signs, Hannah, are Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius. So Aquarius and Taurus actually have more in common than meets the eye. Personality structures among you both are extremely consistent, very loyal, very determined, very tenacious. But you're looking at it from two drastically different perspectives. And in the contrast between you guys, in that friction of energy, is actually what provides the maximum opportunity for soul growth. I'm giving a reading to Aries Suzanne, keeping me warm in this freezing cold New York City temperature. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so let me tell you something about you. Yeah. All right? You were born, don't freak out. <laughs> You were born during Venus retrograde. With Venus retrograde, essentially all you need to do is go out of your way to learn a little bit more about romantic love, relational techniques, and I'll tell you something. The number one author right now on all things relational romantic is an Aries woman. Her name is Esther Perel. So you're an... I, know I love her. her. I know her. You know her personally? Yeah, I of do. I've had do. dinner with her. Call her up. She's great. All right, I am with Joseph, a heterosexual man who doesn't hate astrology. Are you in a relationship or single? I'm single currently, just okay. got out of a relationship. Uh, okay, with a what? What was their birthday? Their birthday was May 16th. A Taurus, okay. So what I'll tell you about that one is Scorpio and Taurus are opposite signs. So they are two halves of the same whole, drastically different orientations at life, but together there could be a real maximum opportunity for relational could success. Be. Could be, right? But here's the thing, measure relationships not by the length of time that was passed, but by the quality of the lesson learned. It can take two weeks to get the lesson. It could take a decade. But if you got the lesson, it was a success. Awesome. Oh, Colin, thank you. Thank you so nice much. to meet you, Hannah. Another Yay, one. another just one. Keep you warm. I'm just so cold. I just want her to hug me. I'm Jessica Lignato, an astrologer and psychic medium. When you look to the stars, you can see what's going on in your life and what's coming next. We're just here meeting with Jessica Lignato and having a reading and talking about our relationship. And we're going to find out if we should have a baby and- Hopefully, I don't yeah. know, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, talk about our communication styles. Is there anything specific or general that you want me to answer or look at? I feel like there's two main things that I can think of. Um, one is learning how to communicate, and the other one is like we're figuring out whether we should have another child or not. And when would you want to have the second child? As soon as possible, but it's Sooner like depending never. on Yeah, yeah. so there's, <laughs> okay. it's depending on a lot of different okay. things. Looking at both of your individual charts, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the relationship chart. Now the relationship chart indicates, first of all, that you would be co-parents. And because you have this beautiful Venus in Cancer in the fifth house, it is currently being opposed by Pluto, mm -hmm. which means mm -hmm. next year will be an intense year for your relationship, <laughs> okay. which is perfect mm -hmm. for a baby or for deciding no on baby. Mm -hmm. So that's why I then turn to both of your individual charts. Mm -hmm. I see meaningful changes for you in terms of either your career or it could be that you have a kid. Mm -hmm. So again, there's this like this reiteration that's a little bit hard for me to to pinpoint just looking at you, but what I also see is that 
the communication stuff that you guys are talking about actually has really come up this year. Is that mm -hmm. correct? It's, yes. it's been this year. Yeah. Because you do have really compatible communication styles mm -hmm. when you agree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You talk and talk and talk and talk yeah. and talk, yeah. and it goes really well. Yeah. And you, when you agree with each other, you think the other person's a genius. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's interesting that the issue is not communication. Mm -hmm. The issue is actually a lot more nuanced. You both have ways of doing things and you both feel like your way is the way that it should be done. Mm -hmm. And when you're in disagreement with each other, uh, one of you, it looks like, has a knee-jerk reaction. Is it, does it switch lanes or is it? I think more one of us. Which, which, one, <laughs> which one might that be? That'd be me. That'd be you, so you yeah. have a knee-jerk reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you have that knee-jerk reaction, do you yell? Yes. Yeah, uh -huh, a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And then, yeah. uh -huh. and then uh -huh. when you yell, mm -hmm. that means Sean, you shut down? Yeah. 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 Like, are you <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> watch, watch me go. <laughs> watch me go. So uh -huh. when you shut down, you get nonverbal, uh -huh. you get passive, uh -huh. and you <laughs> act like you're agreeing even when you're not. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yes. Maybe yeah, totally, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yes. You're welcome. So, okay. So, fun fact, when you do that, what happens for you then is you get more verbal. Mm -hmm and you lean in, <laughs> you're like, let me pull the truth out of you. Yeah. So we have the situation in which you, as a team, are being really reasonable, you're in agreement, but emotionally, no, no. You're digging in your heels, you're digging in your heels, and you are not in agreement. Mm -hmm. Because what you both must do is change yourselves and not your relationship. If both of you as individuals are able to prioritize working on yourselves as individuals, mm -hmm. then the relationship will function perfectly. Because you have this Venus in the fifth house, my guess is you're gonna have another kid. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing that I would, I would say based on all this other stuff we're talking about, which is really tricky, mm -hmm. it's not bad. I wanna be clear, because I see bad relationships all the time. <laughs> it's not bad, mm -hmm. and I tell people when I see bad, yeah. but it is tricky. And, and I would hope that from this conversation, what you both go home and do mm -hmm. is you both verbally articulate your takeaways mm -hmm. and make some sort of really simple agreement mm -hmm. and that's my homework for you that's the approach I would encourage the two of you to take with all this information mm -hmm. and if the relationship is is improved by that then it'll be a no-brainer to have another kid mm -hmm. like it'll be an obvious next right. step right and if not then it'll kind of bring you to like okay do we want to place more negotiating pressure mm -hmm. on the relationship that's my feedback awesome thank you yeah. so much my thank pleasure you. thank you so can awesome. i give you guys yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. thank you oh it's my pleasure it's so good to Me meet too. you it was really nice to just i guess hear about like how our relationship is functioning and what it looks like in the stars like that felt really good that she saw it as something that was doing well it's like it's nice to to hear her say you know we're a good match for each other have a question about how the stars can help your love life leave it in the comments with your sign and an astrology expert may answer it on stargazing we're going to show you how to create a venus bath to bring on the powers of the planet of romance these herbs are all connected to Venus and will help with self-acceptance, emotional healing, and strengthening the heart chakra. This bath will help you to take a step back and focus on love. Love can be a breeze or it can be a little messy, but hopefully after learning how to read the signs, you'll be ready to jump into the dating pool or at least work with what you've got. Either way, with the stars on your side, they'll never know what hit them.